Good morning guys, what's going on? I just caught this beautiful big mangrove snapper. Probably the biggest mangrove fish sure I've ever caught in my life. Victor and I woke up this morning at three o'clock to drive down to the Florida Keys, fish out of Tavernier Creek with Captain Ryan over here. We fished with him back in November and we caught a bunch of wahoo and we've been planning to come down and do some bottom fishing with him. And today was our first chance to do it. The Keys have been closed for a couple months now and grouper season opened May 1st. We were supposed to come down and fish May 1st, which didn't end up happening. So now it's June 1st and we're already getting on some fish. We're gonna have an awesome day, super stoked. So stay tuned because it's gonna be a great video. Brookie's on. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fish. a good fish. That's a nice big mango snapper right there. He rock you up? Oh, oh no, no, you got it. Oh, nice no. job, roll. Game Talk bro. about a nice start to the morning. Let me know when you see the blue um, clip. I'll come in behind you. I okay. got the net for you, and I'll have you walk up. Nice. Feels heavy, right? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, the rod doubled over. I think bed over did it. No, no. Oh yeah, big mangrove. Big mangrove snapper, Brookie. That's a big mangrove. Look at that thing. That's a giant man. Oh. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that. Wow, Brook. Oh, wow. Heck yeah. Look at you. Wow, that's the biggest mangrove I've ever caught in my whole life. Huge. <laughs> look at that. That's what we came here for this morning. Holy wow. smokes. Look at that belly. Look at that thing. It almost looks like a Kubera, doesn't That's it? That's crazy! Yeah. Captain Ryan, first thing in the morning. Yeah. On a live pilchard. Check out that thing! Look at his belly! That, oh my goodness! It's definitely the biggest one you've ever caught, for sure. That's wow! A, that's a nice fish, bro. Nice job, there bro. we go! Huge. Thank you! So you had that rod doubled over. Fucking <laughs> slob. I look back at that, it's like nice. Look at his belly! Yeah. You think that's... That's just from bringing him up faster, or is he full of chum? I don't know. Yeah, he's full. Beautiful fish. All right, so we are anchored in 100 feet of water, and we got a lot of chum going out. We're fishing two rods right now. I'm fishing a pilchards. Victor is fishing a ballyhoo plug. plug. We don't really want to fish more than two, otherwise we'd get tangled, yeah. especially when there's not a lot of current. How about that biggest mangrove of Brooks' life? That was a stud. All right, guys, so I just caught that mangrove snapper on a pilchard, and let me show you how Captain Ryan hooks him up. Technique's a little different than what most guys do. Always that stationary on anchor. I want the bait to swim away from me, not towards me, and I want him to look hurt and injured. So it fires up mangrove snappers. What I do is I go once through the back belly, and I go back through, and it goes right just like that. And then what happens is when you put him in, he's gonna swim away from you. Gonna make setting out that long leader really nice. Don't have to fight it. Let him do the work for you. All right, guys. So we just moved spots. We pulled anchor and now anchored again in a new spot. Threw the chum bag out, and within seconds, we had a bunch of ballyhoo speedos. And now there is a giant school of yellowtails in the chum slick. And we're trying to catch some bait right now. So we got nice fresh stuff to start fishing with. This is Captain Ryan's little ballyhoo speedo rod. If he can't get them in the net. And Victor was catching yellowtails on it, and I got a little jealous, so I had to do it. Yellowtail on a piece of bonita. You guys might not be able to tell, but that rod is like four feet tall at most. <laughs> it doesn't look that small on video, actually. That's really nice, dude. I think she's got you, Victor. Ooh, we've uh, got him bigger one than this. I think she's thick. got him. That's a nice yellowtail. Mm-hmm. I think mine was bigger, Brooke. You think so? I think so. I think mine's fatter. Sure, I'll give you that one. <laughs> There's a giant school of yellowtails out there. If we wanted to, we could have our limit of yellowtails, but Victor and I would prefer to catch things like muttons and mangroves and grouper over yellowtail, but when you're catching them this size, they're always fun. Yellowtails are always a fun fish to catch. frick has got another one on Baby Yoda. <laughs> I can't catch a fish on the big rods today, but I can catch them on the little rod. <laughs> Another nice yellowtail. So now, Ryan, we're deploying the big guns? Yes. I like the Talica 50 for um, boopers. The drag is nice, it's all stand up. It's a nice light 50 wide. Your favorite bait? Yeah, the butterfly speedo. Come on, Brookie. 
Wow. You Don't are worry. whipping that thing's butt. Flying like a nurse shark. Yeah. She's kicking its butt though. I love it. I think it's a nurse shark? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's the only shark you could turn that fast. Yeah. I think it's a nurse. If you want it's if it's a nurse, you want me to pull on him? I'll try to get him up for you. Tell them what you said why you took the rod from me. Well, Laura Brooke's been battling sharks all day. <laughs> so I decided to take this one off her hands. I haven't fought a, a shark once today. You know, I caught a black grouper and I want her to catch one. So we still have one grouper rod out. We immediately knew this was a, uh, a nurse shark because it's the only shark you can turn and get up this fast. Big old nurse. Yeah, the curse of the nurse. Yeah, he swallowed the hook guys. So I'm just gonna cut him here. Swallowed it. There we go. that down and be just fine. Oh boy. Whoa. That's a biggie. No, oh, it's it. still on, isn't it? Real. No. Just real. No, I Pull lost you off. it. I think I got eaten by a shark too. Oh boy. And that was really close to the bottom. Yeah. We got some nice muttons here. We're going to do another pass. If we get sharked again, then we got to go find another spot. The sharks are invaded the Florida Keys today. I'm telling you, we brought them down with us. I know. See? I haven't seen the sharks in a while. In actually a very long time, actually. It's been six months since I've seen sharks like this. Very bizarre, but it is what it is. They got to eat too. We'll do another pass on the spot. If we get, get them again, we're going to head on to another spot. So. Get tight, get tight, get tight. He's there, he's there, he's there. Victor, Victor. Uh, on two. Double. Double that baby. Yeah, you just have to. Oh yeah. I finally got my mutton on. It took a few tries, but I finally got one on. Still got yours, both? Yeah, yeah. We're doubled up. It's a mutton, right? Is it a mutton or a jack? It's a mutton. Oh, oh jack. It's a jack. Oh man. Amber jack? It's a Malmaco, I think. Little baby. Oh man. It's I think I have the same thing. Oh man. Still pretty. Amico, right? yeah. A little right. Amico Jack, not my mutton, but Keep still back. a fun fight. Be good. Let's get him back before he... Go ahead, that's a little Amico, not a greater Amber Jack. See ya! <laughs> <laughs> okay, hopefully this is my mutton. The last one was a false alarm on the mutton, but He's this gotta, one might be the mutton. Just let him pull, let him bend. Take your time, stay tight. Those small hooks are tough when you're bringing them up to 300. Definitely put our time in today. Time, spots, chum, different baits, a lot of break locks, a lot of re rigs. It's like the old flip pallet saying, he goes, I'm all out of tricks. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's called fishing. That's it. And not catching. We definitely had a lot of, like, it was a, lot a lot of action. action. Tons of action. We had, a, we had a lot of crazy. Crazy shark action, too. Or you don't want him pulling when he fights all the way to the top. He's you no, know, he's. I mean, it's still fun to catch a jack, but when we're after target species of snappers and stuff, we don't want him to fight all the way up. We want him to. We want floaters. You want them to float want them and to float. Float and float. The gym's been closed for three months. So you come out here to 300 feet of water, fight some fish, <laughs> get your workout in. Yeah. I haven't seen him. Please be a mine. Behind, right behind you. I don't know. He's not floating yet. So I think he's a jack. I don't know. Might like a jack. I, know, I think he's a jack. He's still. But I've been wrong a thousand twelve times. So. Float. 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 Yeah. 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 Look at that. Yeah. The biggest yes. one of the day. Yeah. I'm so glad you were wrong. Oh. Yes. Look at that thing. Oh Heck. my goodness. Yeah. You were due for the biggest one of the day. He was right. Wow. Yeah, I knew she was going to get a biggie. Woohoo! Gosh, I'm so excited. I started getting a little nervous there thinking it was going to be a jack. I was like, it's going to be a jack. <laughs> but this thing's just a stud. Poked nice inside of the lip. Heck yeah. Now he's done. He's not even moving now. No. He's stiff. Kicked his butt. Woohoo, baby! Check that out. Yeah. There you go. Now you That's can see a how big, big boy. 
He's he's toast. That's right. Right here is why you come to the Keys. These big old beautiful mutton snappers. They're so good. This is my favorite fish to catch. My favorite fish to eat. Check that thing out. It's a slot. Woohoo! I'm so stoked. You earned it. <laughs> Look, he's he's completely like. Yeah, I know. He's not moving at all. Yeah, she kicked his butt. He tried though. Beautiful. He tried to bring me back down and we won. Now he's dinner. Congrats, girl. Wow. It did perfect. That was absolutely perfect. Absolutely that perfect. Is you, a giant. The way you did it is the way you need to do it every time. That's yeah, a fish. Got, Ooh, got ner nervous there for a second. Sorry, you're doing great. You're doing everything right. All right, hooked up again. Hopefully on another big mutton. All right, guys, I want to just give another shout out to Captain Ryan for taking Victor and I out here. He's putting us on the fish today. If you guys are ever looking for a charter in the Keys, check him out. I will have all of his information linked down in the description. If you want to tell him a little bit about what you do, your different charters that you do? Yeah, so I, I run half day, three quarter days, and full day charter fishing trips. I take a maximum of four people. My specialties are reef and wreck fishing, which is what we're doing right now, mutton snappers, black groupers, yellowtail snappers if you'd like, uh, mangrove snappers. Summertime, my target species right now are muttons, black groupers, and mangrove snappers. And yellowtail, if you ask me to. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, I, I love to catch big fish. I, I just love it, so. And then, if you guys want to see the epic video we did back in November, where we caught a bunch of wahoo. I'll have that also linked in the description so you guys can check out that video with Captain Ryan as well. Eyes on me. Wasn't a mutton, that was another Almaco Jack, but they, they're they actually really good eating, but when we have a cooler full of snapper, might as well let the jacks go. But Almaco Jacks are actually very good eating, but we just don't need to keep them today, so let them go, let them grow. All right guys, so we moved from like 300 feet of water to like 230, and I didn't have a bite on bottom and I was reeling in and on the way in, something ate my bait. Not sure what it's gonna be. I, I think I see my weight still. Bye -bye. Yeah. Maybe it's a bonita, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see oh, I don't know. It's on there, look at how high up your line is. It's, it's just it shooting head? to the right. It is the bonehead. The bonita? No, yeah, it's a little bonita. Fresh bait. Well, that was kind of cool. Yeah. As I it was reeling it in, <laughs> it just almost ripped out of my hand. Never seen one of those before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same thing just happened again. As I was reeling up, didn't get a bite on bottom, but about halfway up from the bottom, I got eaten by something again. Not sure if it's gonna be another bonita, possibly black fin tuna. That would be pretty cool, but we'll see. Whoa, that's got a little black fin in it. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking tuna. Yeah, I think you got a big black fin. Boneheads don't like to do that. No, they don't like to go down like that. He's fighting good. He's gonna be pretty decent. Something decent, right? Oh, uh, come on, be the right color. It's not a bonita. Kingfish? Mutton. It's literally floating on top. It's a mutton. Holy it's a big mutton. mutton! It's a big mutton! That snapper. ate it up halfway <laughs> through the water column. Brooke, That's crazy! You are the mutton lady. That's a nice slayer. mutton, too. I, that was the last thing I was expecting. Of. I know. I said mutton. <laughs> a mutton. A nice mutton. Wow. See, <laughs> look at this one. This one's pink. Yeah, it's a pretty deep water one. And the last one I caught was green. And look at this one. Two completely different looking fish. <laughs> nice wow, job. that's so awesome. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> He was like a hundred feet up, wasn't he? A hundred feet up, and it wasn't like I was reeling really slow. Like, I was reeling, you know, to get it in to move spots. And I was like, oh, I just got Ian on the way up, thinking it was gonna be another Bonita or something. That was awesome. It's crazy, he must've been following it for a while. And then smacked it on the way up. Yeah, he's real pretty. He's he'll make real a really orange. good, yeah, he'll make a really good picture with that gold in him. Last fish of the day. Oh no! The 
same thing happened again. I was almost reeled all the way in. My bait got eaten all the way up. Got a little kingfish. First kingfish of the day though. See ya, dude. See ya later, brother. See ya. Well, I'd say we had a really epic day today. Caught a lot of fish. We worked hard. Had a ton of fun. So thank you again for taking us out. Yes, you guys. Enjoyed it. I will meet you guys back at the fillet table. All right, guys. Welcome back to the fillet table. It is time to fillet up this mangrove snapper. Tonight, I'm going to be cooking up both big mangroves that Victor and I caught, as well as one of the smaller muttons that Victor caught. And if you know me, whenever I see a fish like this, I have to cook it on the half shell. It's my favorite way to cook it. I love catching mutton snappers. I love eating them on the half shell. I don't know if I've ever done it on a mangrove snapper. I don't think I have because we rarely ever catch big ones and this is the biggest mangroves we've ever caught. So I am excited to try this on the half shell. I think it'll be just as good as the mutton on the half shell. So let's get to filleting it. Okay, so I'm going to fillet this mangrove with a six inch curved boating knife. This is probably my go-to knife. You guys see me use this on almost every fish that we catch. One of my favorites, you guys can save 20% on all Dexter products with my code BROOK20. I will also have a link for that down in the description. So let's get to it. We're gonna make a cut from the head down to the belly. Mangroves have giant thick scales. So a real sharp knife is definitely important for this. Turn them towards me. Now that I have the head cut, I'm going to take my knife from the head and work towards the tail. Just following the bones, just like with every other thing that I play. I'm not a professional, but I like to take my time. Oh, you're a professional, all right. Heck, <laughs> I'm not a professional. So now I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to start lifting up with my left hand and going down the bones with my right. Don't wanna leave any meat behind. Keep that blade on the bones. If you're hearing that noise, that means you're doing a good job. And then once you get past the backbone, you're gonna start taking your knife and curving it downwards to get the meat on the other side. Beautiful, look at that. 10 out of 10, I would hire you to be my per personal fishmonger. Wow. Okay, so going over those rib cage bones, nice and close. I'm not going through them, just on top of them. Ooh, baby. You never want to cut into a fish's stomach and get any of that stuff on your fish. There you go. You left nothing for the catfish. I'm gonna be mad at you. So now I'm gonna whack off the other side. Whack it off. Wham. You really whacked the sides off. And there you go. Now you got both sides off. How'd I do? 10, 13 out of 10. Give me a rating down in the comments, guys, how you think I did, one through 10. I'd like to interrupt this video. Oh, I'd, I know what's coming. I'd like to interrupt this video. I know you guys know how talented Brooke is. She catches fish, she runs the boat, she cleans the fish, the amazing dinners, You've seen her uh, keep plants alive. <laughs> Everybody knows how talented she is. But I want to show you something. This, this is the world famous cleaning station that Brooke and Victor have been using. Come out here for me, Victor. Look what, look what Brooke did for me. She repainted. You got the whole thing in there, Victor? Oh, yeah. look, look at this piece of art. Uh, she didn't make it originally. Someone else did, but it faded. And she repainted it. And I'm real proud of it. Doesn't that look nice? Beautiful. Okay, you can go back to cleaning fish. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Your, your dad's been waiting to do that for three <laughs> weeks at least. Yeah, we got a wahoo, a yellowfin tuna, and a dolphin. And you guys can comment below what you think that guy is right there. Last thing we need to do to these is take out the pin bones. Again, I'm cooking them on the half shell, so I'm leaving the skin and scales on. When you cook fish on the half shell, it basically acts as like a little boat. If you've ever grilled fish before, a lot of times it falls apart, you lose pieces into the grates, and when you cook it on the scales, 
it keeps it together and it's just absolutely amazing it's really my favorite way to eat snapper okay so i cut on both sides of the pin bones and i left the skin intact and then just gonna cut it out like this so this is where your pin bones are right in there as well as some bloodline i'm gonna use this for crab trap bait all right so there we go there is our beautiful mangrove snapper fillets pin bones out ready for the grill so i will meet you guys in the kitchen one last thing when i put them into the bag i'm gonna put meat to meat like this and then put it in a bag to bring home i don't want any scales getting into the meat i'm cooking them with the scales on but you're not going to end up eating the scales you don't want to get any scales into the meat so just put them meat to meat like this until you're ready to cook it or i guess you could go scales the scales like this if you wanted to but meat to meat works as well Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight we're doing blackened mutton and mangrove on the half shell. And then I'm going to be making a cilantro lime cream sauce. So that's what I'm gonna start with first. And then I'm doing baked zucchini as well as some rice pilaf, which is basically the easiest side dish that you can make. First thing we're starting with is sour cream. You could also do this with Greek yogurt if you wanted to, plain Greek yogurt, but you know what? We're gonna go with sour cream. This is going to be something that we're gonna put on top of the fish after it's done um, cooking on the grill. Next, we're going to go with some garlic. I'm gonna say this is about one like large clove. Now with this, it's something that you can start making and mixing and then tasting as you go along to see how you like it. Here's a bunch of cilantro. And then we're gonna start with the juice of half of a lime. Next, salt. And now we're going to give it a mix. I'm already going to say that I'm gonna need more cilantro. I'm going for a greener color than this. This looks way too white. Mm-hmm, tastes good already. More cilantro. I can definitely taste the lime. I'm gonna add a little more garlic, as well as a little more salt. Mmm, I think I'm never making it with Greek. I usually make mine with Greek yogurt. I think straight sour cream is the move. So Big good. Move. I'm happy with it already. Mm -hmm. You can taste a little bit of everything. A little garlic, lime, cilantro. You want a happy medium of everything, and that's what we got so far. And then we got this handy dandy little bottle that we're going to attempt to pour it into so that when we plate, it's gonna be nice and pretty. So now I wanted to make that first so I could finish it and get it into the fridge before I do the rest of the stuff. So pop this baby in the fridge and let's move on to the zucchini. So Victor is outside turning the grill on for me and I just went to get um, the garlic powder out and let me show you what he did. Garlic powder, red pepper. Red pepper, garlic powder. He's lucky that these two are very easy to tell the difference of. Vicky, you're in big trouble. Come look what you did. <laughs> you know when I did it too? I knew I did it and I forgot it. And you just I left just, it? Yeah, You're I, lucky that it wasn't like cayenne pepper and like paprika, something that's very close in color. At least I can tell the difference. Yeah, if you don't know the difference between garlic powder <laughs> and crushed red pepper, you got bigger problems okay, to worry about. Okay, but if you are mixing those up, then that means that you can definitely mix up something more complicated. Yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> okay, zucchini time. So I took six zucchinis, I chopped off the ends and then I cut them in half and then I cut them those halves into another half so we have quarters. I've never cooked them like this before but I think they're going to be very delicious. So I have a little bit of olive oil here and I think the easiest way to do this would be to just brush it on here like this. So I just brush on some olive oil. I absolutely love zucchini so I'm very excited for this because I think it's going to be really good. So now that we have all of our zucchini painted with olive oil, we're going to salt and pepper them up. Mm. 
I couldn't have fit an extra one on here. Salt, pepper. Now we're gonna go with our garlic powder. Not the red pepper, Vic. Garlic powder. The final step. We're gonna do Parmesan cheese. Actually, this is not Parmesan cheese. Three blend <laughs> craft cheese. Usually we get Parmesan, but Victor opted for a three blend this time, but. Yep, good old craft cheese. So that's done. Now we're going to move on to our fish. And these are going into the oven that is preheating. That should be preheating at 400 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> now it's preheating. So we'll set these aside. Alrighty. Can you guys tell which one's the mutton and which one's the mangrove? You guys guess first, Vic. Show them and then I'll tell you. Now there's gonna be four mangrove fillets and two mutton fillets. They almost look exactly the same now, but these two are the mutton fillets. These are the mangroves. So you can tell that the mangrove has a darker bloodline than the mutton snapper does. The mutton snapper meat is slightly whiter, but it's very, very similar. So I can't imagine them tasting very different. First thing I'm starting with is olive oil so that our blackening season can stick. The point of leaving the skin on is it makes grilling a lot easier, which I think I talked about earlier, but I don't think I've ever really mentioned the fact that when you cook them this way, the meat comes right off the skin. You take a spatula and the meat just falls right off. It's not like you're trying to peel the meat off of the skin. It's not like that at all. It falls right off the skin. You get rid of the skin. You don't eat the skin because it has the scales on it. I'm gonna use that same brush we used on the zucchini to get our olive oil all in there. Now time for the blackening seasoning, which if you guys have ever watched one of my videos before, you know we love this blackening seasoning. I feel like I've said that a hundred times. But Chef Paul's Blackened Redfish Magic, you can't, it's literally the best. No, I'm not sponsored by them, but it is so, so good. We've been using this basically our whole lives to blacken fish. This is a very simple, easy recipe, but it's so, so good. Now we are headed to the grill. Okay. So this is our Camp Chef pellet grill. It's not a propane grill, so I'm not going to have a flame up while I'm cooking. So just keep that in mind, that if you're doing this on your grill, if you have a propane grill, I would keep the heat really low, or else as the fish cook and juices come out, it's gonna start flaming up. And these are relatively thicker. You want them to have time to cook all the way through. You don't wanna just like burn them. Now we're gonna check on them and add a little garlic butter to them. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. They look amazing. Oh yeah. Alrighty guys, check out how beautiful these mutton snappers look. Well, mutton snappers and mangrove snappers, I should say. I don't even know where to start. They all just look amazing. Last thing we're gonna do is pour a little bit 
of that garlic butter sauce on top. And there is our zucchini. Now for the final touch, the cilantro lime cream sauce we made. Here we go. All right guys, you all ready to eat? Your plates are all ready for you. The final touch of the cilantro lime cream sauce on the blackened fish, the rice pilaf, the zucchini. We're ready to enjoy. Mm. Man, is that good. That is so delicious. Snapper on the half shell. Brooks specialty. Wow. We've made cilantro lime cream sauce a bunch of times. And this is the best one that's ever been. So shout out to you, Brookie. And this fish, if you guys have never tried any fish on the half shell, whether it's redfish, snapper, it is so good. The way that the fish's skin and scales holds all those flavors together, nothing drips down, it all just gets sealed in. Absolutely amazing, and uh, good job, Brooke. Thank you. Dinner was another, just knocked it out of the park. Um, when you have fish that fresh and, you know, fresh herbs and everything, you, you just can't go wrong. It, it was phenomenal. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jen. Brooke and Victor were in the Keys on, on the opening day after uh, a three-month closure, and we got to eat fresh fish two days after the Keys opened. Fresh mangrove and mutton snappers. I didn't get to go there, but I got to eat the fresh fish from the Keys. It was delicious. Good job, Brooke. Thank you. So I've cooked snapper on the half shell a bunch of times. I've never paired it with the cilantro lime cream sauce before, but I highly recommend that. We even put it on top of the rice pilaf, which was excellent. And the zucchini cooked that way was also amazing. Give that a try if you never cooked zucchini that way before. I wanna give another huge shout out to Captain Ryan for taking Victor and I fishing. Without him, this dinner wouldn't have happened. If you guys are ever looking for a charter in the Keys, check him out. I will have all his information linked down in the description. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.